Hey stats folks. Um, today we're going to keep on working with our binomial probability distributions, but I want to just try to help us be a little bit more efficient um, and show you some things that maybe you haven't thought of and, and how you can use uh, your calculator to uh, work through things a little bit quicker. So here's that same example that uh, we were working with last time where we've got five field goal attempts. You shoot about 45% from the field. We made a probability distribution that showed how many makes, so zero up to five makes out of the five shots that we attempt. Okay. And I, I feel like you guys were catching on to this really quick on how we find the probability of each, right? We use a combination to count how many ways we can have that number of successes. And then we multiply it by the probability of success to the number of successes and the probability of failure to the number of failures. Okay, and we work through this. But let me get my calculator open. And when I look at this probability distribution table here that we made, okay, I'm noticing I have a couple lists. And we're basically following a formula, right, uh, that gives us the probability for each number of makes. So in list one over here, you can see I already put in the number of successes, 0 through 5. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I know how this formula works, and I'm going to tell list 2 to generate these probabilities for me. So I'm going to arrow up onto list 2 and hit enter. Now this is where I can type in a formula. And how do we find the probability for the number of successes x? Well, first off, we take a combination. So I'm going to go math, probability combination of 5 choosing well how many are we choosing we're choosing whatever the value is in list one for that row right because these are the number of makes that's our x right this number right here just corresponds to the value of x so that's what we have in list one times our probability of success 0.45 to the well what is this power Okay. In each of the rows in our probability distribution, it's the number of successes, which is L1 again. Times 0.55 to the, so that's the probability of failure. How many failures do we have? Well, when we had three successes, we had two failures. How did we get that two? Well, it was 5 minus 3. It's 5 minus the number of successes that we have in list 1. And I hit enter, and there we go. Look at those. Compare these numbers. Right? They match up. So, nice way for us to make a probability distribution using our calculator. We still have to understand how to calculate each one of these uh, probabilities individually, but we're able to do all six of those at the same time. So, that's a nice option for us, right? So, then. You know, when we're, we're working here and we're answering these questions, we could just look at that probability distribution on our calculator and add okay, the, the probabilities that we need. So that's one thing I wanted to show you. Another thing I wanted to show you is a couple commands that our calculator has. Okay? The first one is the binomial probability distribution function, where what I usually just say is binome PDF, our binome PDF command. Our second one is a binomial cumulative distribution function, cumulative meaning to add, um, add up from the beginning. So let's look at this binome PDF. On your calculator, if you're on the home screen, and you go to, look at above this VARS, do you see this? That's distribution, isn't it? Hey, there are some distribution tools built into our calculator. Second, distribution, and if you arrow down here, there's our binome PDF, our binomial probability distribution function. I'm going to choose that one. And look what this says. How many trials? What's the probability of success? What's your x value? And then paste it in and run it. So if we went back to this again, where we had five trials. Our probability of success was 0.45.
And then how many successes are you interested in finding the probability of? Let's choose three, which gave us this 0.276 number. So we're interested in three successes. Hit enter and paste. There we go, 0.276. So that one just does everything for you, right? So you don't even have to know the formula to use that command. And I always feel like it's important to understand how these are calculated, to know where the formulas come from, know how to use the formulas, but eventually we can just turn over to technology once we feel good about all that stuff. Okay. So in fact, when I go back into uh, my list here, I could have, let me clear out list two here, I could have said, all right, list two equals, and then I could have gone to my binomial distribution, binomial PDF, and said our trials is 5, our probability of success is 0.45, and our x value is just whatever's in list 1. And notice it, look at it, pasted it in the list 2 and hit enter. Those are the same numbers as before, right? Okay, so that's an option for us as well. Very quick. I could make up a scenario and say, hey, instead of, instead of 5 shots, what if we took 200 shots? And I wanted to know what's the probability if we took 200 shots that we would make 100 of them. Binome PDF. Now the trials is up to 200, and I want to know, okay, probability of success doesn't change. What's the probability of making 100 of them? Okay, about 2%. Pretty neat, right? So that is our binome PDF function. It gives the probability for a specific x value. Our binome cumulative distribution function, think about that word cumulative. Where have you heard it before? I think like cumulative GPA. Uh, your cumulative GPA is the GPA from every semester starting from the beginning of your freshman year, right? And it's continuing to add Okay, how you do in each class each semester. Okay. Where your current GPA would just be like, what's, what's my GPA just from this semester? So cumulative allows us to add it up. So the way that this works is, let's say that we had those five uh, attempts again. Okay. So let me go back to my calculator. And I'm going to go distribution. And this time I'm going to choose binome CDF. I'm still going to have five trials. Probability of success is still 0.45. Now if I put three in, what it's going to do is it's going to say, what's the probability of three or less successes, right? Adding up to, so zero or one or two or three successes. And it's this number right here. So let me just, usually I, I, I like to draw something out here. I'm going to do, step over to the board here. So hopefully the audio follows me pretty well. Okay. So there's zero successes, one, two, three, four, or five successes. When you put x equals three into binome CDF, it's going to add all those up to three together. Whereas in binome PDF, when you put in x equals three, it's only gonna give you three, the probability of three successes. So that's how this binome PDF works out. So like if we, if we look back to some of these problems here, what's the probability you make less than two shots? Less than two shots. All right, so we've got zero, one, two, three, four, five. Less than three shots would be this. So if I want to use that binome PDF, what x value am I putting in? Am I putting in three? No, I'm putting in two. So let's run this again where we put in two. I'm just going to go back up here and grab it. And I'm just going to switch x from three to two. Yeah, and that's the number that we came up with the other day. 
So I, I hope this uh, calculator stuff helps you to be a little bit more efficient. Obviously, it still takes thinking. You need to know how this stuff works. Uh, but I hope that you enjoy the efficiency of the technology that we have. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.